Edinburgh, of course, had prepared a tremendous reception for the state visit of the Queen and the Duke. And the story begins with the arrival of Her Majesty by royal train to be received by the Lord Provost of Edinburgh, Sir James Miller. Lord Provost duly surrendered the keys of the city to her, and presently the royal visitors were on their way to Holyrood House. As in London, so in the Scottish capital, there was a tremendous ovation from loyal subjects all the way. After the inspection at Holyrood House of the Guard of Honour, provided by the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders, Crohan, their pony mascot, attracted the Queen's attention. And to everyone's delight, she came over to give it a friendly greeting. Next day, there was another state drive along beautiful Princes Street, this time on the way to St Giles Cathedral, the Westminster Abbey of the North. Preceded by the banner of Scotland, borne by the hereditary standard bearer, the Earl of Dundee, Her Majesty and the Duke were given yet another demonstration of affectionate loyalty from tens of thousands. They had come to the cathedral for a solemn service of thanksgiving and dedication, which was attended by an invited congregation of some 1,700 people, widely representative of Scotland. At the close of the service, the historic Scottish regalia, the honours of Scotland, were presented by the Dean of the Thistle, first the great sword of state. In a few moments, Her Majesty held the sword upright before her. Then the Earl of Hume advanced and, kneeling before the Queen, received it back from her hands. Now the scepter. The solemn ceremony was repeated with the Earl of Crawford and Balcaris kneeling to receive it. Finally, the ancient crown of Scotland. This too, the Queen accepted and held before returning it to the Duke of Hamilton and Brandon. over a hundred years had such a ceremony been held in Scotland. The whole service, in fact, was the most memorable and significant event during the Queen's visit to Edinburgh. As she left the cathedral, the wholehearted devotion of the people of her northern realm was once again made perfectly clear. <laughs>